Arr, good morning, ye hearties, from the high seas east of Van Diemen's land. Good morning, we're Chris and Lydia. Thank you for joining the Roving Bellies for part two of our first adventure as an empty nest couple. In last week's video, we boarded our princess cruise ship, the Majestic Princess, in the beautiful port of Sydney, Australia. As we sailed out through Sydney Heads, we turned right and set course for Tasmania. After a day and a half at sea, enjoying the food, activities and entertainment on board, we awoke early on day three to catch our first glimpse of the Southern Isle. Welcome to Tasmania. Good morning folks from Port Arthur area in uh, Tasmania. So we've made it all the way down south to the southern part of Australia. And we're about to go and visit the old convicts prison here at Port Arthur. On the balcony of the stateroom at the moment, we're just coming in, approaching seven o'clock in the morning. I've got my coffee, uh, so ready to hit the day. Bringing this across a little tender craft. Welcome to Port Arthur. Folks, uh, we're at Port Arthur, the first stop off the ship. Port Arthur was an old convict prison for the repeat offending uh, convicts. They, they were naughty boys, even after they'd been transported to Australia, they were sent here. Port Arthur operated as a convict punishment station from 1833 until 1877. The penitentiary building was built as a flour mill that was converted into a penitentiary in the 1850s. The ground floor of the penitentiary had 136 cells these cells were used for the worst of the convicts who were kept in heavy irons. Port Arthur wasn't just a convict prison. A community of military and free people lived here too. The highest ranking official was the Commandant and so he had the best house in Port Arthur. The Commandant's residence was built in a prime location with great views out over the bay. The soldiers lived on the high ground above the penitentiary. They often had to go out capturing escaped convicts. The beautiful church was constructed by convicts in the 1830s. It could hold over a thousand worshippers, both convicts and free people. Religion was considered a major part of the convict reform process. The church was never consecrated, as it was used by a number of different denominations.
feels very English not just the gardens but the weather it's like an English summer's day it's it's sunny but it the it's got a bit of a breeze with an icy chill to it just like you know in England it's nice so it's a lovely day to walk around Lovely. So pretty. What are they? Do you know what they're called? Little bells. Yeah. <laughs> Little pink that bells. Have a real name. Oh, look at this little fat thing. Look how fat he is. Oh, he's, he's a huge. Furry bumblebee. <laughs> he's a chunk of punker. This thing. They don't make him that big in yourself, <laughs> <laughs> They're so clever, aren't they? Look at him. He's that whole sack of pol pollen under his leg. About to get back on the ship now after our trip in Port Arthur. It uh, was an amazing day. Big place to walk around, but uh, definitely worth the walk. And very peaceful, funnily yeah, enough. Yeah, I found that as well. A lot of history and a lot of sad history, but uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to come and visit as far as scenery. As the day turned to night, we hit the dance floor with the other party animals on board. While the ship sailed a few hours north to the Tasmanian state capital. Good morning folks, welcome to Hobart. Hobart is the capital city of the Australian island state of Tasmania. Salamanca. The old part of town. Salamanca is the old historic port area of Hobart, dating back to the 1830s. The old sandstone warehouses that once stored apples, whale oil and wool have now been converted into restaurants, art galleries and studios, craft shops, cafes and bars. On Saturdays, the place comes alive when a large weekly market is held along Salamanca Place. Salamanca, which is the old part of Hobart, and we've been spending the last couple of hours just wandering through art galleries and craft shops. I think it's a great um, stopover for the cruise. A couple of hours, you can stop and have a coffee, you can check out all the arts and crafts of the large local artisans, and um, yeah, it's a great little stopover. Without waiting at the top of the stairs. When you climb up the historic Kelly Steps from Salamanca, you'll enter a suburb called Battery Point, named after a battery of guns that were placed on the point back in 1818. This was Hobart's first suburb and was home to maritime workers. It's still a residential area today with many historic cottages lining the tiny streets and laneways. 
In the heart of Battery Point is Arthur's Circus, where a ring of charming old cottages surround a traditional village green. This is definitely a step back in time and well worth a visit. It could be your spot you could, if you had one of these houses, you'd just come out and sit under your tree in this nice, look how nice this grass is. <laughs> it doesn't look real. Yeah. This is Arthur's Circus. Look at that little cottage. They're tiny. Battery Point, uh, St George's Church, the highest peak used for navigation. Ship captains coming up around the Derwent River back in the old days. Time for a coffee and then I think we'll head back down to the marina. Sitting in the lounge at the front of the ship, and it's very soon it will be casting off and leaving Hobart. But we've got a nice little cheese platter and a drink. It's a beautiful late afternoon, almost five o'clock. Got a beautiful spot to watch Hobart disappear into the distance. And we're off down the Derwent. Bye bye Hobart. Next time we hit land, we'll be back in Eden, in New South Wales. Thank you for roving with us today in Port Arthur and Hobart. We still have some scenic cruising to do along the Tasmanian coast before we head to the old New South Wales whaling town of Eden. We hope you join us again for part three in our series next Sunday.